Hello there, it is your friend Phil here, Project Management Trainer and Coach. It gives me great pleasure to speak to lots of you who are now PMPs. You started off on this journey on the channel, you went through all of my videos, you studied hard, and now you're a PMP. Goodness gracious, you got no idea how much delight that brings to me. You have no idea how excited I get when I learn that one of you has passed the exam that studied on my watch using my content. It gives me great pleasure. But today I just wanted to give you some really high level reminders that the journey is not over. In fact, I have a very robust curriculum that I'm currently developing for you PMPs who are certified because it doesn't end at becoming PMP certified. You've probably heard me say it a million times, the PMPs, the beginning after that move to other bigger and better things and someone says what could be better than being a PMP well there's a lot being better than being a PMP majorly using what you have learned using what you've studied a lot of people study for this exam and they just sweep everything under the rug do not sweep what you have learned under the rug that is a huge mistake. You do not want to do that. You want to begin using what you have learned along the way. I couldn't believe it. How effective this journey was in preparing me to work for a well-known aerospace company, defense space company, Honeywell. Before I got into Honeywell, I'd just taken my PMP exam and day one, boom, I'm faced with quality management. I'm faced with earned value. That was the biggest part of my job in defense and space, earn value management. What a blessing that PMP was because I would have been absolutely close. Hey, even before that, I would not have gotten the job if I did not know about earn value, if I could not speak intelligently to the tenets of earn value and what it rested on, the principles, and spelling out for them what exactly it meant to have an earn value management system. If I couldn't do that, there's no way I would have gotten the job. So. The PMP certification is not just a piece of paper to throw under, you know, your stack of already big, huge, humongous resume or certificate stacks. It's not that. It's not to begin stacking up more and more certifications. It is really for you to get knowledge and use it. Knowledge is power. Let me give you a simple one, simple concept. Your team is stuck. There's a problem. How do you use what you have studied or what you have become more aware of in the world of PMI? How do you use it? Which tools would you use to stimulate creative thinking? Someone says brainstorming. What else? Someone says the affinity diagram. That's good. Anything else? Someone says mind mapping. Good. What else? Someone says the Ishikawa. Now you're getting it. These things that you read about, they need to be implemented in your daily project management. Think about it. How do you create a high performance team? How do you create a high performance team environment? So getting ready for the PMP exam, you probably thought very little about taking what you're learning back to creating a high performance team. But do you know that there are things you can take from resource management? back to your job to consciously build them in. For example, the five stages of team development. Think about that. Your team is stuck. Your team is always at loggerheads. What can you use from resource management to help them? Well, you can definitely use the awareness of the five stages of team development. You can definitely use the concept of rewards and recognition to motivate and inspire teams. See, you can definitely use the concept of smart goals and having a schedule. There's a lot of stuff that you PMPs need to take and use. What about building and maintaining effective relationships? Do you know that research shows success in business is 87% the people piece, the relationship piece. It is only 13% contingent on product. Which means if you're not able to build and maintain effective relationships, business is doomed. 
That is why the top 2% of project managers are not those who pass the PMP exam. No, they are those who demonstrate great interpersonal and team skills. So don't get me wrong, being a PMP is great, but PMP plus is being aware of the greater things, interpersonal skills, being able to motivate your team, being able to create traction for action, being able to mentor your team, being able to coach your team by bringing the answers out of them as opposed to giving them the answers all the time, the ability to delegate, the ability to take ownership and accountability where necessary, understanding keys for leadership, understanding that in order to influence, you need to be committed to the cause. You need to be able to build trust. Are you building trust post PMP? What about being a likable person? Are you demonstrating that after being a PMP? Are you maintaining great team dynamics? Are you managing for success? These are questions I, I, I like asking PMPs because it takes everything else off the table. There's no more PMBOK guide to, to study till, till, till the cows come home. There's no more PMBOK guide to become the ambient in your life. No, that all stops the moment you get certified. But there are other very important things. Leadership. You've probably heard me use the quote before from John, John C. Maxwell. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Everything. Being a project manager it rises and falls on leadership. Just be an ineffective leader and very quickly you'll be replaced. You see, leadership is so wide and vast. A lot of PMs say, oh, I don't want to be a political animal. I don't want to get into the middle of a scuffle. It's part of your job. Hello, conflict management 101. How do you resolve conflict with your team? How do you resolve conflict on a project? Don't shy away from conflict. Conflict is good when managed the right way. When it is made more productive conflict than destructive conflict. There's nothing wrong in conflict. You know, we look at the five ways we can resolve conflict. We talk about withdrawal and smoothing, compromise, force or direct and collaborate. But you don't get the opportunity to collaborate each and every time. So when do you use these other approaches? Are you using these other approaches? How do you maintain lines of communication with your stakeholder? Get feedback. I call it a temperature gauge check. You want to gauge your stakeholder's temperature. Are you doing that? Are you ensuring great quality in your communications as a project manager? You know, we talk about the communications management plan, but the underlying reason is for quality. We want our communication to be effective, efficient, fit for use, conforming to any communication requirements, and to evoke a response in the customer that generates action that you're looking for. It gets by. We also talk about tailoring the message to your audience. And that's why we need a communications management plan. Do you have a communications management plan? You need a communications management plan. It's so important. Part of being a project manager involves viewing work in a holistic fashion. You know, a holistic approach means thinking about the big picture view of the process. Thinking about the big picture view of the project, the program, the portfolio. And in order to think about a project holistically and view it holistically, it's important that the project manager practices being mindful about the project, having that presence of mind to realize that the project is bigger than it may seem to be. Also to recognize the stakeholder's influence on the project. You know, in Chapter 3 of the PMBOK Guide, we talk about complexity. Well, it's important that the project manager view every piece of the project in a holistic fashion. It's bigger than the tasks. It's bigger than just the work you're doing. So the project manager should understand stakeholder needs, understand stakeholder interests, 
understand stakeholder influence. The project manager should understand how project actions impact other areas of the project or other projects and the organization as a whole. There's a lot to be said about viewing work in a holistic fashion. What about resolving issues and problems? I talk about the PMI documented approach, the DIGSIV method, how to define a problem, identify the root cause, generate solutions, and then choose the best solution before implementing and verifying. These are actionable steps that every PMP can take back to their job and use. What about selecting the right tools of project management? Project management tool selection is key when it comes to scaling the framework and tailoring it into a methodology. A lot of people think they need to use the whole kitchen sink that they learned in PMP school. Not so. Tailoring is needed because projects are not all the same. Not every single project requires every single tool for every single process. Projects are different. And even in organizations where similar projects may be executed, the variables at play could be very different. See, when tailoring the project, you as a PMP, you should address the importance of the triple constraint. See? The iron triangle. Time, cost, and scope. Don't forget that. These are little things that you can take back to your work. Make a home run. How about being one who thinks out of the box, being able to identify opportunities, being able to seek opportunities to improve your project. You know, we talk about chapter 12 in the PMBOK guide and risk management and stuff like that, but don't forget, risks are not just negative. We have positive risks or opportunities. So as a project manager, it is your job to be looking for that factor that distinguishes you from other people in the business, keeps you ahead. See, how do you demonstrate value in your firm? How do you demonstrate value outside of your firm to clients? These are things that project managers should be thinking of after getting certified. One of the biggest things I believe project managers who are PMP certified should be doing is resolving problems, resolving issues. So gone are the days when we would run away from issues because we didn't have a good enough toolkit. Now you guys have 756 pages of wisdom collected from your peers put into one repository known as the PMBOK guide. You just need to unravel which of these 756 pages contains my answer. For some people, it's right there in the middle. For some people, it's in the glossary. For some people, it's towards the end. For some people, it's page 555. For some people, it's page 89 that people whiz past, but there are many components of the plan that people don't use. See? So how do you resolve problems? Well, in order to resolve problems, you as the project manager must first understand in detail various aspects of the problem and you need to apply intentional problem solving. That's what you need to do. But then you need to explore the methods I talked about, the DIGSIV method. That is a six-step process given to you by your friends at the PMI through the PMBOK guide to resolve problems. You know, right there in managed quality it is, you've got that approach. And there are other approaches, like if you go to control resources, you find another approach. See? One of the pieces that project managers often forget is stakeholder involvement. Believe it or not, some PMs fail to realize that without their stakeholders, there would be nothing on a project. So in order for the project manager to maintain stakeholder involvement, motivation, and support, what do we need? First of all, identification. Secondly, a plan. A plan behind stakeholder engagement. 
And believe it or not, a lot of PMs, I want to challenge you. Are you a PMP? Do you have a stakeholder engagement plan? Are you thinking intentionally about how to engage your stakeholders? Because if you are not, you ain't doing it right. You should be thinking about, how can I engage my stakeholders? How can I get them to participate in the fashion needed? Another thing to take away from the PMBOK guide is the PICC process, Performing a Greater Change Control. And talking about change management basics, one, the first thing is to understand that change is not evil. Change for the better. Kaizen. Change is not bad. But it's important that we manage change so it does not become what it's not. A monster, a demon, on her rampage. Some people you got change eating up so rapidly and it's not being managed. That is when it becomes bad, when it's not managed. Unmanaged change. Change bouncing off the walls. So it's important that as you go into business as a PMP, identify change is good. It's not always bad, except it's not managed. And change needs to be streamlined. So before your sales and marketing people make those empty promises to people, oh, yeah, we can do that. Oh, yeah, we can change the schedule. Oh, we can add additional resources. No, you should not make those promises without going back to the drawing board to analyze the change. Simple PICC 101. What does it tell you? Someone asks for a verbal change request. What do you do? You ask for it in formal writing. What do you do? You analyze it in isolation. No, with a team. Are you getting your team members on board? Are you bringing people along with you to make changes? You should. You should analyze the change. And then you should discuss the change with higher authority, if there is higher authority. These are simple things we learn, but they are so powerful when used. You know, I, I teach this stuff to so many organizations worldwide, and I see the delight when they realize, wow, <clears throat> this is a simple 10-step process for managing change, but we don't use it. If we did, we would avoid a lot of the landmarks, or landmines, rather, and a lot of the upsets that we face in projects. You know, another thing project managers often blow past because it's not really discussed in chapters 4 to 13 so they don't really hone in on this but this is in chapter 3 more than anything else and it's all about interpersonal skills and understanding the importance of being assertive to be effective if you want to be an effective project manager you've got to be an assertive project manager what do I mean by an assertive project manager an assertive project manager is not one who is rude or or brash or brassy. No, 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 it's not that. It is a project manager who understands the importance and value of being direct, being clear, and being honest, and the importance of building trust in an organization and in front of the stakeholders. If you're not assertive, what happens is you end up taking on a lot more than you can bear, a lot more than your team can bear, like a particular manager who just ends up taking on all sorts of dog's body work and throwing it to his team and saying, yeah, you do that. Yeah, you do that. Why are you giving us this work? Why did you take on the work? We are maxed out. Well, I didn't want to say no to my peers or my bosses, so I took on more work, and now you guys can help me out with it. That is the wrong approach. So when a manager is not assertive, he or she ends up taking on a lot more than his or her team can handle. And as project managers, it is important that we be as clear, honest, concise, and assertive as can be. There's a difference between being aggressive. That's not what I'm talking about. Being aggressive devalues the rights of others, disrespects others, makes people smaller, you know, in in everyone else's eyes, undermines people's opinion. That is not what I'm talking about. And on, on the other end of the spectrum, I'm not talking about being passive. Both are negative. And I'm not talking about being passive-aggressive. You've got three states that are different from being assertive. Being assertive is being honest, and it's being 
effective and efficient in your communication and direct. So as a project manager, it is important. Chapter 3, where we talk about personality and we talk about leadership versus management. We talk about leadership styles. This stuff is important. Be polite. Be tactful. But tactfully refuse what is beyond either your line of authority, your capacity, or your ability to be effective. It's better to avoid or refuse responsibilities that are optional, you see, especially when you know you're going to disappoint. If you're going to disappoint, don't take them on. Politely and tactfully refuse. It's called being assertive. Someone says, well, Phil, my boss gave me this and I can't get out of it. Well, again, there's balance, there's middle ground, and there's prioritization. You've got to prioritize. You've got to prioritize. And in all of this, we, we need to ensure that we're professional. We need to ensure that we're committed to do all that we can. We need to make sure that we act with honesty and integrity. So, so let's explore this word called integrity. Integrity is the quality of being honest having strong moral principles and uprightness. So you know very well you cannot deliver in three months, but you keep quiet and you make a false illusion up. Oh yeah, we, we can do it. Oh, I'll tell them closer to the time we're not able to do it. That, that, that is not acting with integrity. See, integrity can be defined as the state of being whole and undivided. When we say a person has integrity, it means doing the right thing in a reliable way, even when other people aren't looking. It means people can depend on us. You know, it's a, it's a personality trait that we as humans have come to admire since it means someone in question has a moral compass. The person in question has moral compass that does not waver. So as project managers, who follow the PMI Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct, this is also expected of us. It, it really is. And talking about the Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct, project managers should maintain professionalism in the face of adversity. I've heard some PMs use such foul language by any standard in email, verbally, and it's not acceptable. The PM should maintain self-control in all situations while responding calmly. It is practiced. It doesn't come overnight. But the project manager should have the ability to handle difficult situations while responding to issues and concerns. It can be said that the project manager should have a high degree of emotional intelligence. The ability to stay calm under pressure and the awareness that actions taken in a conflict or adverse situation can very quickly spiral out of control if those are the wrong actions. So, as a project manager, we should have that can-do attitude. We should be able to self-monitor, motivate, have willpower to avoid blowing up and getting crazy. And avoid the temptation to go down the dark path that many have in displaying the lack of emotional IQ. We do not want to be like that. So it's important we keep our emotions under control in the workplace, outside of the workplace. In conclusion, it is important that we review issues on the project with objectivity, it is important to be able to step away from any situation and look at it in a third party form without being biased, without having preferential treatment for others, but just taking ourselves out of the situation for, for a minute and looking at the situation from a third party perspective. There's the me perspective, there's the you perspective, but then there's the third party perspective that is neither. It is important that project managers be able to do that. Take yourself out of that situation and look at it with objectivity. 
without bias, without being partial, and without those leanings that we many times often have as a result of our background. In conclusion, the PMI has right now over 900,000 PMPs, 900,000 my oh my. That is a massive number. It is approaching a million. But when you take a look at the landscape, what do you see? You see that you've got project managers worldwide, all around the world, everywhere. It tells you that diversity is important to the project manager. Cultural diversity in the workplace is becoming more and more and more important. And we as PMPs, who are part of a global tapestry of professionals, should understand its importance. See, uh, a 2013 survey undertaken by Think Tank Center for Talent Innovation found 48% of companies in the U.S. with more diversity at senior management level improved their market share the previous year, while only 33% of companies with less diverse management reported similar growth. What do we see from this? We see that 48% of the companies in the U.S. with more diversity at senior management improve their market share. Cultural diversity can improve employee engagement. It's important in this day and age. We need to be aware of these things as project managers and embrace diversity, uphold diversity. On a diverse project management team, the project manager should ensure the team's adherence to cultural issues, legal requirements, and ethical values. And the project manager, guess what you should do as the project manager? Set expectations for the team in terms of them adhering to the organization's ethics standards. As PMPs that adhere to the code of ethics, it is important we understand this. And with that, my friends, we've come to the end of this motivational talk for PMPs, people who are certified now. You may ask, what are the next steps? Well, the next steps are encapsulated in a lot of what I've discussed. So I would like you to go back, listen again and again, and again, and get to the point where you are going back to this information, using it as a checklist, and making sure you're doing what you should to expand and grow in project management. Thank you all very much, all those of you who have been through my program, who have been through either the learning management system or just my videos on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, social media. I want you to drop me a comment below. I want to know how you are getting along as a project manager who is PMP certified. What have you seen? What has changed in the way you manage projects? What do you see the future of project management to be? Let this be an open dialogue. Comment below. I really want to hear from you. I could mention your 101 names, but I'm going to spare you that. And I'm going to be looking for your responses to this thread, all right? You guys take care, and I'll see you around. Bye for now.